thank you for coming to the most, one of the most important institutions we have in our city, the Larkin Street Youth Center. Where's Sherilyn? There you are. Hi, Sherilyn. Good to see you. Thank you, Sherilyn, for hosting this very, very important announcement. Uh, it's one that we are been very excited to do. But before we do that, there, there is a little background that we want to give, and I think we have a few people that need to speak because uh, it, 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 we're excited about what we're going to do, but we have to put it in the right context. And I think uh, it's appreciated by uh, Bevan that we do so because it's uh, history making, but it's also uh, where we come from and where we go have to be linked. So first of all, I want to thank all the supervisors that are standing behind me. This is a tribute to them, each and every one of them. You can see Supervisor Farrell, Wiener, Ellsburn, Cohen. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Jose Cisneros, our treasurer, thank you very much for being here. All right. Very importantly, Trent Rohr and Barbara Garcia from Public, yeah. Public Health. Yeah. Our two chiefs, fire chief and police chief, thank you very much for being here. Our school district, Hydra Mendoza, thank you for being here, Hydra. Marie Sue, Children, Youth, and Family, thank you for being here, too. Who else am I missing immediately back here? Oh, well, I'm about to do, sir. Uh, Joaquin, Joaquin Torres, thank you for being here, Joaquin. And we're going to give you more, more resources for neighborhood services. You won't be the only person here. Write that down. But I also want to thank all of the members of our community, whether it's Wells Fargo that's here, or the Interfaith Council, and the wonderful leadership here, the staff that's here, uh, staff from uh, HSA as well as uh, Public Health. Uh, they're all here, and I know they're feeling some really, really great vibes because we have a great announcement to make that's going to be formal, even though it's been informally leaked out. Um, but I will say here, uh, it's never been about a campaign uh, for an election. It's always been about a campaign to improve lives. And I will take you back to a moment uh, a few months ago where uh, it was being exchanged. Uh, let's get things done. No, let's get things done better. <laughs> and uh, I listened to that. I saw that. I saw that in the middle of the night and went, God, that works. That's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, Bevan, Bevan and I already knew we had a great uh, a transit director, uh, but little did we know that we would have an opportunity to have uh, a director of uh, uh, great programs uh, that we want him to be in charge of in this administration. I've said all along that uh, we need to improve our delivery of services. We need to bring hope to a lot more people. We need to be even a bigger tent. and. Uh, Consistent with that, consistent with themes that I've mentioned since the inauguration that I've felt very strongly about and I think they've resonated with many communities. Uh, we need to get jobs out there. I'll, I'll, I'll continue that theme. We need to get job training out there because if you care about homelessness, you ought to be a big advocate about job training because that will help sustain people's ability even though we find shelter, as temporary as that is, we need long-term uh, shelter. That's why I signaled the Housing Trust Fund working group that we're doing. But for the people on the street, where is their hope coming from? It has to be that we register our support for them in every possible way. And getting all of the different agencies around housing, getting all of the different agencies around better quality services for our homeless, for those that are uh, wanting not to be homeless, as well as those that are already in the system. We need uh, even more leadership. And I'll take this opportunity to personally thank uh, Darius Kayon for his wonderful years of work. It's never been. No one's ever said it was an easy job, but we saw Dar out there every single day, whether it's Market Street or 3rd Street or in Chinatown or in 6th. Mark, I mean, every single day he's out there, and he was always asking for help. We got that help, uh, and he says, okay, can I uh, have a little break? 
I want to go to DPW, and of course, he's going to be a continuing partner as a result of that. And while he left, we immediately went to the mode of uh, what could we do? Who could we find uh, that would not only carry out that great work, but that would also embrace uh, the direction that we have been talking about, uh, the fulfillment of more promises, the fulfillment of a long, long promise that we've made, uh, and also have the reflection of sensitivity, of, com of passion and compassion uh, that will lead us uh, into the next generation of work that we must do in order to end homelessness, because that's our goal. Uh, it is not about temporary stuff. It is about finding a long-term goal, and that means that we reach out to people, we try to make life changes, try to get a situation where better decisions can be made, uh, both on the streets or in uh, situations where we can talk to folks, get them that supportive care, uh, the support of housing, and then hopefully they're short and long term. And I want to thank Supervisor Jane Kim for walking in. She's another, <laughs> another great advocate. And of course our director of uh, public, our director of the Housing Authority with so much resources uh, that are absolutely needed, uh, Henry Alvarez. Thank you, Henry, for being here. You know, I, I can go on and on, but uh, I know that uh, uh, Bevan is eager to get to work. I just want you to know that as we talked about this work, and as we shared our passion and, and our vision for it and found uh, the right mix, uh, I think we also went to our individual offices and said, what's the best acronym <laughs> to have on this? And, and it's not, it is, you cannot lose this because, you know, housing, opportunities, partnership, and engagement are well-deserving titles in and of themselves. But when you put all that together, what does it spell? It spells something that we both share, and that's hope. Uh, that's the underlying reason why I asked Bevan uh, to come aboard and take on this massive but uh, very serious responsibility is because we have to work on the future of hope for everybody in the city. And uh, I am committed to this, uh, and uh, we've always been a strong commitment to it. And I know somebody here behind me has registered that commitment and that hope for so many years. Yeah. Uh, former board, president, supervisor, and then one who authored our 10-year implementation plan to end homelessness in the city, Angela Aliota. Come on up, Angela. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Gung Ho Choi. All right. That's right. Uh, into the new year. Um, I just want to say, Bevan, when you called me last night, how excited I am that you're going to take this position. What I think is really important for all San Franciscans to remember is that the plan that we have implemented from June 29th of 2004 to today, under the wonderful leadership of our new mayor, Lee, uh, our San Francisco plan is an example for the United States of America. For every state in this nation, our plan is the one to follow. We have housed over, I'm sure that Dar or Mark or, or Trent can give you the exact number. I know it's around 8,431, but permanent supportive housing. As the tenure, the chair of the ten-year plan, and uh, um, that takes care of the chronically homeless, which is a subsection of the general public, uh, the general homeless. Um, I want you to know, uh, Bevan, you're probably going to be sorry you ever met me, <laughs> because ask Dar, two o'clock in the morning, Dar, come pick up this person. They're on the corner of Columbus and Green. Um, I think that it is literally, as Mother Teresa said, and by the way, it's so great to see the Interfaith Council here, yeah. and Father yeah. Lane and Michael Pappas and Rita Simmel. I mean, whoa, that totally 
um, the group we go to when we need immediate housing and people who, who give, just give of their heart and soul. So please make sure that you remember the Interfaith Council is the one to call if Dar doesn't answer the phone or you don't. I call Michael Pappas. At any rate, the bottom line is we're the best. We're going to stay the best, and having you as the new director is going to be so exciting because our 10-year plan and our general homeless population plan is one that we need to continue. We need to see the differences, and I know you can do it. So, Bevan, welcome aboard, and give me your cell number. Thank you, Angela, and thank you for your constant work with us, too, because you've never, ever left your heart anywhere but the city. Thank you very much. I also want to uh, make sure you know that in addition to the great Larkin Street Center that we have here, we have the NAACP who's here, uh, because I know they are big supporters of this. We also have the Hunters Point Family Foundation. Thank you for being here as well. Um, Bevan, uh, this is important, and uh, you and I, when we talked, uh, and we're going to be talking a lot more publicly about this, both of us, as we both enter uh, into not only this new job, but another era where we expand our willingness uh, to end homelessness with a lot more partners. Uh, I know Christina Lagi just arrived too, so I, I, I welcome the quorum challenge that we have here at the board yes, because, <laughs> because it is that important. Uh, uh, we need to uh, break away from whatever we haven't been able to succeed on in the way we've done them and even get more success. I know Bevan, at the heart of everything, is he wants to make even more changes so that we work together and make improvements. We want to think outside the box. We want to see how technology and innovation can also help our homeless population and the housing and the services they need. He's going to join us with uh, not only the themes that I put out, but his own themes and things that he's talked about. Uh, not only during this brief, this campaign, but all his whole life. He has been about the best level of services that anyone should appreciate in a great city like San Francisco. I give you our new director of, home, of homes, of opportunities, of partnerships and engagement, Bevan Dufty. Well, my heart is very full because of all of you that are here and the opportunity that Mayor Lee is giving me to serve the city I love so much. It's appropriate that we're here at Larkin Street, an organization that I have such admiration for and that truly is a national model. And there are many great organizations in San Francisco, some that need to be uplifted and supported and others that really are ready to be a model for other cities and other states and communities. But I do want to say in terms of giving young people opportunity and in terms of having competency around LGBTQ youth, no one does what Larkin Street does in such a comprehensive and holistic manner. And so I'm extremely honored that Sherilyn, who's been a great collaborator and colleague, has welcomed her here today. And the mayor's desire to come out and be at an agency and to be with individuals who are part of our city's effort and individuals who need support and help, I think speaks to the engagement that we want to have. We don't want San Franciscans to feel like we're not making a difference. And sadly, the people that they see on the street are people that are not succeeding in the system, either because it's not working, falling between the cracks, there are not enough resources, or personal choice, deciding not to avail oneself of service. And so those are challenges we face, but we've got to engage people because San Franciscans understand a lot about homelessness. Whether you're in elementary school, and I can say that my child talks to me a lot about homelessness, and I see the art projects that are school, and they talk about why can't people have homes, and why can't people have jobs, and the sorts of lives that you want people to live. And I start this job, and I think the mayor starts his administration with an expectation that we can, not with the expectation that we can't. And, and I have hope in this job, and I didn't want to come into a job that I saw as, as maintaining the status quo. 
and there are incredible things that are going on here, but we have the ability now in this 21st century to really look at the outcomes for people, not just within homeless services, but individuals that live in affordable housing, public housing, families that are at risk of homelessness, and for special populations. We have groups, whether it's transgendered individuals or veterans or families, and recognizing that we have the ability to look at outcomes and to make a difference and to engage our stakeholders, such as foundations and other partners that are such as the San Francisco Foundation. I was so grateful that Dr. Sandra Hernandez called me to welcome me into this job and to welcome me to the important work that San Francisco Foundation is doing around Hope SF, which is our city having the value to continue to replace and rebuild public housing and make them communities of opportunity, to make them communities that people want to live in. And I'm so grateful and touched that my colleagues and many new members of the Board of Supervisors that knew me before serving as a supervisor myself. And I believe that there is a level of comity, collegiality, and willingness to work together that is unprecedented in the 20 years that I've worked in city government. The talent of the people behind me, people that work for the city, people that lead this city, is at a level that I have never seen. People who are standing behind me are not people seeking personal or political gain at the expense of this city. These are people that want to succeed and do a good job. And each supervisor, each person who's here with me as part of the city family faces challenges in responding to homelessness and responding to families and individuals that are in crisis. And part of my responsibility is I know what it means. I know what it means when people express frustration and say, why can't you do something about this individual on the street? Or why is it that a child could come to school and not know where they and their family would sleep that night? We can do much, much better. And I am extremely honored to have this opportunity. It really is something that I am going to commit my life in the years to go forward to making a difference for people. And I just want to say that this is the beginning. We have an ambitious agenda. But one thing I respect about the mayor is that you don't see someone who invites people to come to a press conference and they're not surprises in terms of initiatives that have not been shared, that have not been worked out with other members of the political family or the constituency that's involved. This is a mayor that truly believes in collaboration. He believes that there are ideas and energies that are out there among the citizenry that need to be reflected in what the city does. And so I don't stand here to say that we have all the answers, but I say that we are going to ask the questions. We're going to work with everyone. I was so grateful to talk to Jennifer Friedenbach from the Coalition on Homeless, and she has embraced me. I, I treasure my friendship and my working relationship with her and with other advocates. And I also want to say that going forward, as the mayor indicated, this is about a partnership and a public engagement. And I expect to work with the press. And you have seen the work that the media has been able to do, whether it's Kevin Fagan, whether it's a series that Joel Tucker did, every reporting, every discussion of this issue, even if you take us and challenge us and say you can do better, that's an important step because people don't want to walk away from homelessness. And for too long in this city, people have been afraid that it's a losing issue. And that was part of the reason that I wanted to say hope. At this stage in my life, I don't want to be the director of losing. I want to be the director of an initiative that's going to change things for individuals and families in San Francisco. So it's a tremendous honor. I am honored that uh, Angela Aliotto is here and for the tremendous contribution. And I would say that when the 10-year plan was adopted, it gave us hope. There were many great things happening in the city, but they weren't codified, they weren't brought together, they weren't in a manner that could present itself to agencies such as HUD in Washington and to others. And so I would like to just close and acknowledge Dar Kahan, uh, who, who did such a spectacular job. I want to acknowledge that George Smith, who was a colleague and friend of mine under Mayor Brown's administration, who worked uh, as, as the homeless liaison, and uh, Mark Trotz, who did that work, and even Andy Olshin. So I go back a full 18 years and can name everybody that's done this job. So, Mr. Mayor, I am ready to go to work. I want to thank the department heads that are here, and the best is yet to come. I have hope. Thank you. thrilled that everybody is here and for um, and we couldn't be more thrilled um, that uh, Bevan's new role 
behalf of Larkin Street, he's done a great job for youth, and I know he will continue to do a great job for everybody. Um, so those of you that would like a tour of our drop-in center and our education and employment services, that's going to begin now. Um, <laughs> so uh, you're in the drop-in center, and we're going to start moving. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you all. <laughs> yeah, but more than five.